Antipartum hemorrhage. So antipartum hemorrhage refers to bleeding occurring after 24 weeks of pregnancy. There are a number of causes one must consider. So we've got placental abruption, placenta previa, vasa previa, and uterine rupture. Other causes then include any incidental findings, such as cervical lesions or polyps, infection or trauma. While in some cases, the cause is not determined, and this falls under the category of undetermined origin. Okay, so if you haven't watched them already, now would be a great time to take a look at my videos on placental abruption and placenta previa. These are the two most common causes of APH, so here I'm going to focus on how we can differentiate between them in a clinical setting. So first of all, in placental abruption, the condition is associated with a significant amount of pain. The pain is constant in nature, irrespective of the contractions. While on the other hand, placenta previa is not associated with any pain. Therefore, in placental abruption, the uterus will be tender and sometimes hard, while there is no tenderness in placenta previa. Now, in terms of bleeding, there may be absolutely no bleeding in placental abruption, as you may have a concealed abruption. Or instead, there may be small amounts of old dark blood. While in placenta previa, there is a good amount of fresh red bleeding. Now, because of the possibility of the amount of bleeding being hidden in a concealed abruption, Shock in the patient will be inconsistent with the bleeding observed in the vagina, while in placenta previa a lot of bleeding will be noted in the vagina, and therefore shock will be consistent this time with the external loss. Now, in placental abruption, the fetal lie is normal and the head is engaged, while in placenta previa, because the placenta is in the way, there will be an abnormal lie of the fetus and the head will be high. Next, so since in placental abruption the placenta is detaching from the uterine wall and the blood supply to the baby is being affected, fetal distress may be observed. If the placenta completely detaches from the uterine wall, therefore receiving absolutely no blood supply, the fetus may also be dead. While in placenta previa, it is merely the placenta which is bleeding, so the fetal heart will be normal. Finally, of course, when performing an ultrasound, the placental location will be normal in placental abruption and low in placenta previa. Keep in mind over here that most of the time an abruption cannot be identified on ultrasound, so the diagnosis of placental abruption is a clinical one. Great, so this is very important to know and comes up quite a lot during exams. Good, so next let's move on to discuss briefly the other causes of APH. So we've got vasa previa. So vasa previa is a rare condition that occurs when fetal blood vessels cross in front of the presenting part through the fetal membranes, as we can see in the image over here. So essentially what happens is that when the membranes rupture, the fetal blood vessels within the membranes also rupture, and this is called ruptured vasa previa. Of course, because we are dealing with the direct blood supply going to the baby, ruptured vasa previa is usually accompanied by severe fetal distress. Great. Finally, we have uterine rupture. So this is when literally there is a rupture of the uterus. This usually occurs during labor, in a woman with a previous C-section scar, or as a uterine scar secondary to previous surgery, such as a myomectomy. This part of the uterus will be weaker, and with contractions during labor, this weak point can give way, resulting in uterine rupture. So just a statistic over here, uterine rupture occurs in 1 in 200 cases after a previous cesarean section. Great. So that was a quick recap of the common causes of antipartum hemorrhage. Like and subscribe. Thank you.